Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today, the focus is on weak acid equilibrium problems. These are a major topic in AP Chem, a major topic in a first-year college course. You've got to be really good at them. What I'd like to accomplish in this webcast is to take you through the process for solving these equilibrium problems involving weak acids. They are equilibrium problems. You're going to set up an ice table. They're going to also involve pH calculations, and it's really a matter of sequencing so that you set your problem up and approach it appropriately. We're going to complete two practice problems involving weak acids. In one problem, we'll be given the pH of a solution of known concentration, and we'll find the equilibrium constant, the Ka. In the other problem, we'll have a, a Ka given to us for a solution of known molarity, and we're going to find its pH for the weak acid solution. So let's jump right in. In this first problem, a researcher prepared a 0.20 molar solution of phenol and measured its pH to be 5.29. Calculate the Ka and the percent ionization of phenol in the solution. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is write a balanced equation. Now, phenol, we were given the formula, you're not expected to know that, all right, is going to react with water to form the hydronium ion and the anion. All right, you need to recognize here that the way the phenol is written, it's a monoprotic acid. So we're going to have the acid lose one hydrogen ion, transfer it to the water, and we get our hydronium ion and the anion, the conjugate base. Okay, our next step is to write a Ka expression. Now that we've got the balanced equation, at this point, you should be very comfortable writing equilibrium constants. So all the Ka expressions take the same essential form. The hydronium ion and the conjugate base are in the numerator, and the original undissociated acid is in the denominator. They all take the same general form, whether you know the formula of the acid or not, okay? Um, and then we're ready to set up our ice table. Now, if we go back to the original problem, we were told that the phenol solution was originally 0.20 molar. Okay, so when we go to set up our ice table, we have the phenol concentration is 0.2. Before the equilibrium is established, the hydronium ion was zero. Well, close enough to zero. We're going to ignore the, any contribution of hydronium ion from water because it's much tinier than what we'll get from this. And the anion, the conjugate base, were both zero. All right. Since I'm starting with only reactant, only phenol, there's no other source of the other ions, All right. this system has to shift right. So the phenol concentration has to drop by x. The hydronium ion concentration has to increase by x, and the conjugate base, the anion concentration, also has to increase by x. Okay, because of the stoichiometric ratios, right? Everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the thing is, in this particular problem, the way it's set up, we were given the pH, and we know from our pH calculations that the pH is a measurement of hydronium ion concentration. So in essence, we're given the value of x here. All right. We know the hydronium ion concentration can be calculated by doing 10 to the negative pH. So we substitute that in, and we get our hydronium ion concentration. Great. So we're going to put that in our ice box as well. All right. The other thing I just want to remind you is that since the pH had two digits after the decimal, we do know the concentration to two significant figures. The other thing we remember is from the reaction stoichiometry from our, and also from our ice table that the hydronium ion concentration and the concentration of the anion or the conjugate base of the phenol have to be equal at equilibrium, right? They were both plus x. And so when we know the hydronium ion concentration, we also know the conjugate base concentration. They're both 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. So we can put that into our ice table. All right, and solve for that. Now, we do know x. We could actually subtract 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6 from 0 0.20 to find the equilibrium concentration of the phenol. But the concentration changes. x is so tiny that we can effectively ignore it, assuming that x is less than 5%. But quite honestly, even if you do the math out directly and you do 0 0.20 minus 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6, just the significant figure piece, the precision piece, means it's going to essentially be unchanged. So this is a very reasonable approximation. So now what we're ready to do is substitute this into our Ka expression, all of our equilibrium concentrations. We had written the Ka expression earlier, and we're just going to substitute and evaluate. And this did not keep my 
superscript, so I apologize for that, but that's okay. Um, and we're ready to plug that in, and we get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 10 for our Ka value. That's a really small equilibrium constant and consistent with the literature value for the equilibrium constant for phenol. So we've got our answer. Great. The last thing we were asked to do was to find the percent ionization. What percentage of the original phenol molecules actually dissociated to release H plus ions? To calculate this, you do the hydronium ion concentration that we found from the pH over the original acid, acid concentration, um, the phenol concentration, which was 0.2. So we just substitute and evaluate, and we end up getting a percent ionization that is 0.0026%. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, which is not atypical for these weak acids. Okay, so we've done our first problem. All right, let's go on and do a second problem where we're given the Ka value and we want to find the pH of the solution. So here's the problem. Calculate the pH of a 0.050 molar solution of hydroazoic acid, HN3, and we're given a Ka value of 1.9 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, I've chosen this problem, well, for two reasons. One is that hydroazoic acid is not one that students see very often, and so I wanted to make sure you were comfortable writing the dissociation reaction, but also uh, there's a simplification with these problems that I wanted to show you as well. So the first thing we need to do is to write the balanced equation. It is a monoprotic acid. We're going to lose 1H plus and form the azide ion N3 minus. Okay, um, and you'll notice in this reaction I did not include the water. It's implied in the situation, but I chose to write H plus instead of H3O plus, and that's perfectly fine. There's no problem with doing that. The next thing we need to do, is, of course, is to write our Ka expression. They all take that same essential form, H plus times N3 minus over HN3, which was the original acid. And we know the value of this is 1.9 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now we are ready to set up our ice table. We knew that the original concentration of the acid was 0.050 molar, so we'll substitute that in, and that the initial concentration of H plus and N3 minus were both zero. Again, we're assuming that we can ignore the contribution of H plus from the autoionization of water here. The relative changes, much like what we saw before, the HN3 concentration has to drop by X. The H plus concentration and N3 minus concentrations both have to increase by X because they're in that one-to-one -one ratio. And so at equilibrium, all right, the HN3 concentration would be 0.05 minus X, and H plus and N3 minus would each be X. But there's something we can do to make our lives easier. We need to eventually solve for x, right? That's the whole goal of the problem. If we assume that x is very small, that would mean that 0.05 minus x is essentially 0.05. It's okay to do this because the Ka value for this acid is a very small number, less than 10 to the minus fourth. And so we're going to assume that less than 5% of the acid dissociates and that uh, X is much, much smaller than 0.05, and that this assumption is valid. We don't actually know that yet. We'll have to check it later, but right now it's going to make our lives much easier. By doing this simplification, by assuming that X is much, much less than 0.05, it means we won't have to use the quadratic equation, unless you really want to. I mean, if you love using the quadratic equation, go right ahead, more power to you. But it takes a little bit longer, and the answers are going to be within 5% of that same answer. So it really just makes it things easier for you, okay? So we can go on, substitute into our Ka expression, and solve for x. We were given the Ka of this acid at the beginning of the problem, so really all we have to do is solve for x now. It's so much easier if we don't have to use the quadratic equation, unless you really want to. Uh, go ahead and do that. You'll get substantially the same answer, but it'll take you longer, and we'll just... Um, you know, rearrange, isolate x squared, take the square root of both sides, and we end up with a value for x being 9.7 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Great. So we've got x now, and we can use that to calculate the pH, which is really what we needed to have. We know that pH is defined as the negative log of the H plus concentration, which was x, what we just found. So we can substitute that in, and we get a pH of 3.01. All right, now, remember, we had made a simplification so that we didn't have to use the quadratic equation. We said, oh, x has to be less than 5%. It was. If we take our 
value for x, which was 9.7 times 10 to the minus 4th, and divide it by the initial concentration of the acid, it comes out to be, I got 1.95%, so it was a reasonable approximation. We end up with a pH of 3.01. I did want to point out that if this had been a strong acid with the same concentration, the pH would have been more like 1.3. So this is substantially less acidic than a strong acid solution, which is what we expect to see with weak acids. Great. These are important problems. Practice them a lot. You can't be too good at them. That's what I'm always telling my students.